Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am terrific. Wow. I'm, I am just terrific, and if people hear that extra voice, <laughs> it's just our special guest, Miss Lena, is joining us for The Next Page, and that I know, is awesome. I, I should have introduced her. <laughs> You should have. Well, at some point, you might. <laughs> she might introduce to. herself. <laughs> so today, um, and this this podcast might actually be just a little bit shorter, just because there's not as much negative to talk about. And I'm starting with the negative, not the positive, which is not what I typically do. I typically reverse it. But I did my year, my first quarter reflections last Friday, and all I can say is not again. Yeah. So what were your thoughts when you <laughs> saw it? Well, at first, I I had forgotten that you gave me a spoiler on what we would be talking about. So I ha- and then I remembered, and I thought, oh well, you know, it's that's why you do it, right? Right. Like, so that you can right. have that, so that you can have that not again moment now, yes. and not in December. Right. Exactly. And so, even though I was really disappointed in myself. Hmm. Um, I wasn't as upset because I caught it only three months in. So Mm -hmm. what I want to share with people first is the reality of what was happening. All of the metrics were good. All of the, you know, at MACNI, we call them our leading indicators and our lagging indicators. They were all good. So everybody was happy. The problem was that when I sat down and reflected, I realized that there were two things that were drastically missing. And they were my streamlined reflections and my white space. And somebody might say, what do you mean by streamlined reflections? Well, if if they'll recall, if we go back to when I talked about what I learned last year, I had come up with a system to refine my reflection time so that I would do daily, weekly, and monthly reflections and so that it would be able to speed up the process and allow me to capture the learnings quicker. It worked for like three weeks, and then it fell apart. And then the second thing that was missing was white space. I had committed to adding buffers into my calendar so that I could do the things I'm supposed to do and so that I could um, do them as well as I'm supposed to do them. And both of those things got pushed out of the way. Mm -hmm. And the danger in that is they were pushed out of the way because of success, which is scary. Because what happens is things are going so well, you don't realize there's a problem. Now, other people realize there's a problem. So what did you, yeah. you said something to me and how did you notice it? How did I notice? I, well, I don't know if it was just like a a feeling from watching you. You, you had said something to me like, oh, I'm, I'm busier than ever, but I'm not stressed. And at first, I had to really like hold it in. At first, I wanted to kind of, give out a little bit of a chuckle because I knew that that couldn't be true, right? That it couldn't be sustained. I had seen your calendar and I, I knew how much you had going on. And I just thought there's not enough margin or, or white space or buffer, whatever you want to call it. And I think what I said to you was that like, you know, you were, you were one cold away from having it all come crumbling down. Yep. Because I've been there. I think that's yes. it's always easier to uh to see these things in other people, right? So so I'd been there before and I knew what could be coming for you and I just knew that it wasn't sustainable that right. you can you can remain busy only for so long without kind of, you know, tipping over the edge. Exactly. And you know, one of the things and I asked I asked our engineer Tim if he knew what I meant by keeping the plate spinning. And, mm-hmm. and he said to me, he said, I, yeah, I've heard that phrase before. So I actually went, did a quick YouTube search because I referred to it in my post as I was able to keep the plate spinning. Yeah. And as a, as a kid, there were a lot of these entertainers on television that would keep the plate. They would spin plates on mm-hmm. poles. Mm-hmm. And so I just did a quick YouTube search. And literally there, there's a guy, his name is Eric Bren, and he was doing a spinning plates thing on the Ed Sullivan Show. So if you literally go on and Google spinning plates, Ed Sullivan Show, you can see exactly what I mean. But you run back and forth, keeping this, the plates spinning, and everything is good until you have one hiccup. 
And then it's and all then the crashing down. And then down. all the plates <laughs> come crashing down. And it's not a pretty scene. And so, so somebody might say, well, wait, but so what was going to happen? Well, what happens is I'm not as prepared for things as I should be prepared for. I'm not, um, I'm not giving 100% because I physically can't. Because if I have to jump from one meeting to another meeting to another meeting to a training to a coaching session, I don't have time to prepare mentally to deliver my best for the people that deserve my best. And thankfully, if I look at the first quarter, I didn't have the cold. Um, but it was interesting. So you noticed it. And, and, and we, we had an event, uh, one of our in-person events, and I bumped into Jim Beckman, who's uh, our former board chair and does consulting with us here at Mackey. And he said, how are you doing? And I said, Jim, I'm doing, I gave the same answer I gave to you. I'm doing great. You know, I'm busier than I've ever been, but I'm on top of it type of thing. And he said, what are those closest to you say? And I told him what you had said. And my wife had said to me, I think you need to scale back somehow. My son Tim said, I think you're way too busy. You need to scale back. Yeah. And I, and, but, and it ended up being my, my quarterly reflection that showed it. And what happened, so people say, well, what did it show? A lot of comments didn't deliver what I wished today type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Need to spend more time prepping before my class. Um, things like that. Um, yeah. Miss uh, So-and-so was upset because I hadn't gotten back to them, you know, on a proposal or something. Was I so-and-so? Was that me? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't you. No, you're always, you know, you don't ever come across to me I as don't upset. get upset. I'm just thorough. <laughs> it's like I never, I never... I never think you're upset, but I can sometimes tell in the wording that you use <laughs> that, Dave, you're coming really, really close to pushing it. <laughs> that I mean <Don't>. business. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> Fix it. Don't disappoint Marissa, right? No, I, I think like the, the lesson here is that like you only have a certain number of hours in your day, just like everyone else. Right. And you can you know, jam pack it with all those really great things that you were doing. Like all the things that you were busy with were fantastic. You were coaching, you were training, you were doing things that you love. But the time has to come from somewhere. So it gets right. trimmed when it comes to some of that like follow up or that preparation. Yes. Things that maybe um, don't seem as productive or as fruitful as other things, yes. even though they are yes. really important. Right. Exactly. The things that we cut are actually the things that set us up for the success tomorrow. <laughs> so if, if you think about it, if the training that I do is only 80% what it could be, I'm losing the, the edge. You know, um, mm -hmm. sometimes people talk about what's your edge. Well, I've lost my edge if I'm only eight, delivering 80% of what I could be. So now I'm just right. an average trainer, right? Right. Um, I'm just an average coach. I'm just an average husband or dad. I'm not doing what I should be doing. Um, another thing that really hit me was this. So, so why would I be working so hard? Well, I love it, and it generates revenue, right? And, and revenue is important. Without revenue, organizations can't exist. But one of the things that slipped was my ability to work on new content. Yeah. Well, new content is future revenue. And if I'm not working on future revenue or future content, the revenue will dry up at some point. You know, if I'm, if I'm just using the same materials year after year after year, they're outdated. Why would anybody come? So my margin is when I do those kinds of things. And that was what was missing. So, my, you know, for me, the big key was, oh, my goodness, this needs to change and it needs to change quickly. Mm -hmm. And what I'm actually looking at. So the question then might be, so what are you doing about it? You know, um, well, one of them is, you know, I want you, Marissa, and our listeners to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, ask me every couple of weeks, how are you doing? How's your margin? You know, um, how are you doing on your weekly reflections kind of thing? Because accountability... Growth always accelerates when you're in an accountability environment. So I need to get back on this path. So the accountability piece is huge. I'm going to ask my wife and my son 
to help keep me accountable to building in the margin. The one thing that I did really well at the beginning of the year was I scheduled April 1st as my reflection day. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to you, well, you can schedule, I don't know, maybe even a podcast recording or something. And you just said, I don't want to interfere with your reflection day. Mm -hmm. Now, I, we didn't, but some other folks did. Or maybe we, we, <laughs> no, no, we, we did. did record. We did record on it, and some other folks did too. But the point was at least the day had this was flagged mm-hmm. so that I didn't schedule as much as I normally would on that day. The other thing that I did that I'm going to make sure I do for the balance of the year was I had also scheduled in a quick trip, a week, an extended weekend with my wife to go visit her dad and her sister in Florida over the Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Mm-hmm. So we had that. And, and, and so next week we're going to talk about, you know, what went well, what were my learnings. And so we'll talk a little bit more about it. Because it was not a total failure. The, the first quarter was not a total loss. There were quite a few things that I did learn. Mm-hmm. But I really had to say, okay, what am I going to do different? And it's I'm going to block in that time now for the balance of the year. Mm-hmm. I've already got the quarterly reflection scheduled. I just need to be more intentional about scheduling those vacation kind of times. Yeah. And then really discipline myself to make sure that every week I am doing the weekly reflections. Mm-hmm. Have and you, it'll work. Have you considered like just knowing like your personality and, and you know, have you considered what you'll do when faced with – maybe like training opportunities or other things that, that might infringe upon that time. Like yeah. How, so basically of, like, how are you going to say no or how are you going to prioritize? Have you considered that? So, so I have, um, one, one of the things is that I haven't thought through completely, but one of the things is I will schedule no additional training mm-hmm. in the last three months of this fiscal year. So through June, if it if it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Period. Anybody that asks me for something now, unfortunately, it's going to be July. Yeah. I, I think that I is I so important. You you had told me that previously, right? And that was like, a I was so proud of you. You know, I thought like that is awesome because a lot of people struggle with that and wouldn't be able to hold to it. But B, like it showed me as kind of like a, you know, we work together on training that like what you're valuing right now and that like it's okay for us to say like not right now. Right. Right. Like so it it shows, you know, that you're not going to stress the team. Right. Because it, all the things that you take on, we take on as a team. Exactly. And, yes. uh, you know, it, it just it really did show your priorities. I think that's awesome. Yeah, so that that right now, so at least through June, I think I'm going to be fairly disciplined. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the other thing is that knowing that I have a week scheduled for vacation at, at the end of June, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to take another week in July, because I have to do it, It's my wife only has certain months in the year when she can take vacation time. Right. She works in a school, so that's really big, mm-hmm. um, that we can do it together, and it would put it in that window. And then I'm also going to start working on what are some long weekends mm-hmm. that I can plan in just now? Just because I always get to the end of the year and I'm trying to figure out how to use my days. You know, well, no, spread them out so that I can deliver what people deserve. People are paying me to give them my best, not to give them average. Right. Right. And I'm sure changing them and I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And even those that I'm not, that aren't paying me, like my family, they're paying me with their time. Do I want to give them what's left? No. Mm-hmm. That's not fair. So yeah. those were my two um, not again takeaways. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad. I am so thankful that I did this quarterly reflection because I would have crashed on something had I not mm-hmm. picked it up this quick. Because I did. I made it through three months mm-hmm. without a serious cold. You got the cough instead yeah. of me this time. It's me. Um, you know, um, but it was on the verge a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's good news. We figured it out. We, we, hopefully we've plugged the holes. And then I can't wait for next week uh, to talk about 
what were some really cool things I learned or figured out? Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I, I love doing these with you because, um, well, I get to challenge you, which is like fun. I get to ask the questions, but um, I don't think you're alone in these experiences. <laughs> I'm sure not. Yeah, I'm sure not. So is there anything that you think we might have missed? Are you asking me to identify <laughs> what I think <laughs> Your, uh, your shortcomings <laughs> were in the last three months. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. No, I think okay. that the the white space margin buffer, what again, whatever you want to call it, I think that's something that um, I could spend a lot of time talking about, but, but I think it's really important. So I guess I would just encourage everyone to to consider that, you know, to yes. take a look at, at your schedule, at your life, and at work, at home, with your family, um, and see, like, is that there? Do you need exactly. more? Yeah. Do you have too much? I, I don't think. I'm. I'm guessing that our listeners don't have too much, but uh, it's important. Yeah, you know, you cannot be your best giving a hundred percent all the time, because at some point it's going to collapse. Yeah, and you got to leave so you room. Need... You got to leave room yeah. for spontaneity. Not, not even. You know, yes, you have to leave room for the example we gave, like a cold. But you need to leave room for like opportunities that pop up that are that are spontaneous and really awesome, right? Like, yes, you know, your, your kids winning an award at the science fair and you want to be there. Like you want to be able to say yes to those types of things. And without yeah. margin, you can't do that. Exactly. <laughs> you want to be able to go skiing when it's a beautiful day. So, yes. And I, I hear our exit <laughs> music. That's, is that our exit? <laughs> yes. Uh, Lena's, Lena's saying that I need a little white it's space for go. her cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And with a special guest, Lena, this was The Next Page.